Welcome everyone. Good morning, afternoon, and evening to our global community. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this webinar where we'll be discussing an exciting educational opportunity, the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science offered by the University of London through Coursera. My name is Pedro and I am an enrollment counselor. Joining me today is Nisha and Nanki. <clears throat> fellow enrollment counselors who will be monitoring the Q&A chat box for your questions. So as the presentation goes, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A chat box. Naomi from Coursera's marketing team is also joining us today. <clears throat> and last but not least, I'm excited to announce a special guest for today, Kyle, a current computer science student joining us today to go through an interview with myself to discuss his experience on the course so far. All right, so let's begin. <clears throat> now, before we go for the interview, I want to briefly walk you through the program overview, the program structure, the tuition fees, and the admission process. Then we will be interviewing Kyle for him to share his experience with us. And we will conclude with a live Q&A session. Remember, as the presentation goes, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A chat box. We will be addressing most of the questions during and at the end of the webinar. However, for specific questions or questions we won't be able to answer because of the time we have available, we will be providing Chili Piper links so you can schedule a call with me or my fellow enrollment counselors colleagues to discuss your interest in depth. Saying all this, let's begin. First of all, it is important to highlight that in today's rapidly evolving world, computer science has become the backbone of innovation and technological advancement. From artificial intelligence to cybersecurity, software and games development, to data science, the field of computer science offers endless possibilities and remarkable career prospects. And there is no better way to kickstart your journey in this field than through a reputable and globally recognized program like the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from the University of London. All right, now to give you a bit of a background, the University of London has a long history of offering distance and flexible learning. Starting in 1858, students were able to pursue their degree from outside of London. Over the years, they have become one of the largest and most diverse universities in the United Kingdom, with over 100 programs in more than 180 countries. Also, it is important to highlight that this degree is awarded by the University of London with the academic duration provided by Goldsmith University of London. One of its 17 Federation members and a recognized body with degree awarding powers in the United Kingdom. You will be able to earn the same University of London degree as on-campus students. This means that this program should be regarded as any other Bachelor of Science in Computer Science degree, since the university holds the standards of this program to the same expectations of a United Kingdom uh, Bachelor in Computer Science. There won't be an indication on your graduation certificate, not even on your transcripts, that the program was completed online or through Coursera. You will also be invited to your graduation ceremony in London and will receive your degree, certificate, and transcripts to your mail. All right. Now, let's go into detail about the program structure, uh, the time commitment, and how it's like to learn online. All right. Keep in mind that one of the key advantages of this bachelor in computer science is its flexibility. It is specifically designed to accommodate to the needs of working professionals, career changers, and those seeking to enhance their knowledge in computer science. With Coursera's user fleet platform, you can study at your own pace, fitting your coursework 
around your existing commitments. This flexibility allows you to strike the perfect balance between your personal and professional life while pursuing your educational aspirations. All right. The program is 100% online and it's self paced. It is self paced in the meaning that you can choose when to dedicate the time to the progress of your degree. However, there is a program structure that will help you go through the content in an organized and coherent manner. So essentially, you are going to be able to find two academic semesters during the year, each one with a 22 week duration. They run from October to March and April to September. And you can decide to enroll on a minimum of two subjects per semester for a part-time semester, or up to four subjects per semester for a full-time semester. Let's say if you decide to go for a full-time semester for the whole program, you will be able to complete the program in three years, which will be the shortest time to complete your degree, unless you transfer credits from previous study experiences, which is one of the options. For you to know, the average time commitment in a full-time semester will be from 28 to 30 hours per week on average. And now, if you decide to study part-time with an average time commitment from 10 to 15 hours per week, you will complete the program in six years, which is the most extended duration for you to complete the program. Remember, flexibility is the key advantage of this program. So you can change the academic workload to your convenience from one semester to the other. Let's say from full-time to part-time or from part-time to full-time from one semester to the other, or you can decide to enroll not into two subjects, not into four subjects, but let's say something in the middle, three subjects. In this way, you can also complete the program in four or five years as well, right? Now, regarding the program structure and the syllabus, the program consists of 22 modules and a final project, right? You are going to be able to find eight compulsory modules at level four, covering the fundamentals, how computers work, how to program, and mathematics that underpin computer science. Then you will pass into another eight compulsory modules at level five, covering programming skills needed to solve our projects and specialist topics such as graphics programming and data science. After you complete the compulsory modules, students can choose one of the seven specializations to concentrate their studies on a particular area of computer science. The concentrations or specializations available are machine learning and artificial intelligence, data science, web and mobile development, physical computing and the Internet of Things, games development, virtual reality, and user experience. You can also choose to do a general route so you can have a bit more flexibility to choose your level six modules and what your final project is based on. All right, so you're going to be taking on the last part of the program, six elective modules from level six. All right, and then you undertake a final project that combines your knowledge and skills to create a software system in the line of your specialization. This program structure and level of subjects follows the higher education framework standards in the United Kingdom, which will leave you in a good position for pursuing a master's degree in the future. Now, in addition to the exceptional curriculum, another distinctive feature of the Bachelor in Computer Science is the access to a global community of learners through collaborative forums and interactive discussion boards. You will have the opportunity to engage with fellow students around the world, all right, fostering a vibrant learning environment. So this community aspect of the program promotes knowledge sharing networking and the exchange of ideas all right now let's go into how is to study online 
all right? What it takes. There's no live attendance required. There will be weekly pre-recorded video lectures, quizzes, activities, and assignments. All coursework itself pays, except for the midterms and the final exams. There are set dates and times for midterms and final exams. You will receive a syllabus and an exam timetable for each of your courses so you, that you are aware of the deadlines well in advance. All right. Although there are no live lectures, there are live webinars hosted by the tutors, the same tutors that teaches on campus at the University of London. The tutors run live webinars at different times, twice per week. This is an awesome opportunity to go through the coursework covered that week and receive guidance on the assessments that were super helpful. No doubt about that. You will find that some live webinars, tutors will share additional insights, and you will also get to interact with your classmates joining from all over the world. So I highly encourage you to attend them if you can. But if you cannot attend, that's OK. The webinars are all recorded for you to watch at a later time. Aside from Coursera, you will also need to regularly check your student portal through the university. The student portal is a gateway to all of your additional learning resources, which includes your virtual learning environment. Here, you will find the most up-to-date information, including registration dates, exam dates, as well as wonderful resources to support your development, such as well-being material, career development exercises, and student support services. If you want to check in detail the program specifications, Nisha will be adding the link in the chat box for you to be able to download the program specification document. Now, let's continue with the tuition fees. Tuition fees uh, are based on where you reside. There are different fees based on if you live in a band A or band B country or in the United Kingdom. You can check on the university website which band you fall under. Nisha will be adding the link for country bands in the chat. So the total cost of the program will depend whether you live in a band A or B country. If you live in a band A, the total cost is 12,000 with 654 British pounds, and each module is 400 with 90. If you live in the United Kingdom, the total cost is 17,000 with 110, <clears throat> and each module is 670, uh, 77. And if you live in the band B, the total cost is 18,000 with 840 British pounds. And each module is 700 with 36. That's for the total cost of the program. However, you are going to be paying as you go, you pay semester by semester, and the amount you pay per semester will depend on how many modules you decide to enroll. So essentially, you are going to be paying twice per year before the beginning of the academic semester or each academic semester. Remember, you can enroll into a minimum of two subjects per semester and up to four subjects per semester. So if you want to know how much a semester will cost, just multiply the cost per module by the number of subjects you want to enroll. Also keep in mind that we enrollment counselors are going to be there to help. So if you have any questions, schedule a meeting with us so we can discuss in further detail any questions you may have. <clears throat> We're going to be paying the tuition fees directly to the University of London through the student portal online, either by debit card, credit card, or bank transfer. If you want to find out more about the tuition fees and how to pay the tuition fees, please find a couple of useful links in the chat. Nisha will be added in as well. And finally, before we go for the main event, let's talk about the application process, all right? Applications are open right now and they will remain open until September the 11th, all right? There are two admission routes, the standard entry 
and the performance-based route, all right? Uh, oh, please continue with the, the next slide. If you do not qualify for the standard entry route, your application will be automatically be considered for the performance-based route. Right. This is what the checklist of documents you will you will need to provide. The first one is evidence of your full name and date of birth. It could be your passport, your birth certificate, your national identity card. And applicants must be uh, age 17 or older for their registration on the registration deadline date. Then you will need to provide academic transcripts and mathematic proficiency. So you must provide an scanned copy of relevant academic transcripts. For further information and clarification on country-specific qualifications that are accepted because the university received qualification from all over the world, please check the University of London qualification, uh, qualification for entry base. Nisha also will be providing the link in the chat box. Now, for you to be able to know in detail what the academic requirements are. Also, you can schedule an appointment with an enrollment counselor for them to guide you accordingly. In the link we provide, you will find standard entry requirements according to the country you complete them. And remember, in case you miss to comply with the standard entry requirements, there is still a chance for you to be accepted. However, each case will be assessed on an individual basis. All right. Also, you will need to submit a motivational letter. So this is a, a good opportunity for you to express yourself, your interests, who you are, and how this program will help you to accomplish your future goals. English proficiency test, if English is not your first language, right? Your resume as well is optional, but it's a good tool for the admissions department to be able to know who you are in detail, your academic background, and your professional background as well. All right. Um, then it's just about submitting your application. If you meet, you're ready to move forward, Alicia will be also sharing the link to start your application for you can uh, start working on your application. And then you can continue. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about the performance based route. What is the performance based route? So essentially, remember, if you do not comply with the standard entry requirements, you could still be considered for this program. If you get accepted on the performance-based admission route, you will be allowed to take only two subjects from the program. Those subjects are already part of the bachelor degree, but those has to be a specific subjects. Introduction to programming one and either computational or discrete mathematics. And you must pass those two subjects with a weighted average of 40% or more in order to be able to continue with the rest of the program. After you pass those two subjects, no further restrictions will apply to you. You are going to be able to continue with the rest of the program. But keep that in mind that those subjects are you're taking are already part of the program. So you're taking like a part-time semester with two specific subjects. All right. And now uh, let's continue, please. Uh, for the uh, for those in the process uh, of applying, the deadline to submit your application is September the 11th. So after you have submitted your application, you will receive a confirmation email that your application has been received by the admission office and a notification of your student's reference number. Each application gets reviewed by the admission committee and you will receive communication within five to 15 business days through email. All right. If you get accepted, you will receive your offer letter and you will find information regarding how to log into your student portal with a new username and password to register for modules and access to your orientation course. For the next cohort, you will have uh, until September 25 to register for the subjects and pay for the semesters as well. Now, let's summarize a little bit and then we continue with the main event, the interview, all right? So after you successfully complete the program, remember you will receive your degree awarded by the University of London under the academic direction of Goldsmiths. And it will state Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. No indication 
it was taken online or completed through Coursera, and you will receive a physical copy of your degree certificate in the mail, along with your transcripts. And finally, you will be invited to celebrate your success in London at your graduation ceremony with fellow graduates from across the world. And now, let's go for the main event. Let me introduce you our special guest for today, Kyle, with this short video. When I was 14, I fell in love with video games. I looked online to see if I could find any courses that offered computer science or games development. I'm getting my bachelor's degree online from the University of London on Coursera. It was affordable and just having that flexibility was really nice. There are so many things that you could be and if you want to be it, you could be it on Coursera. To earn your degree from a world-class university online, apply today at Coursera.org. All right, so let's give a warm welcome to Kyle, our current student for the program. All right, Kyle, um, welcome once Hi. again, and thank you for joining Hi, us everyone. today. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, so That's how are you doing? I'm good. How, how is everyone doing? Hoping everyone's OK. Definitely. Let's hope everyone is fine. So yes, participants are really excited to know from you how has you been your experience so far? I will ask you a few questions uh, that could help prospective students to clarify some of their doubts and answer some common questions. All right. All right. So, but however, feel free to add any additional insights or feedback you would like to share with us. All right. Ready to start? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> good. So yes, uh, let's just start with the first question. This is a good one. How did you decide? to study for a degree online? And what were the major benefits of studying online for you? But what are uh, the benefits? So, so I, I grew up in Malawi, which, doesn't, which offers no computer science program at all. Uh, I think a lot of Africa doesn't have any computer science. Um, and I just, I was like, no, I'm, I, you know, spur of the moment at, at night, sort of, I want to start learning computer science now. Uh, so I, I looked and I, I tried to find a program that was online because I wanted, because I just wanted to start and they have, so just to backtrack, I want to be a game developer, like really badly. And I was like, okay, well, if I don't want to get a degree in games development because it doesn't seem too stable. I want sort of security. So I wanted to find something that had computer science. It was computer science, but with a hint of games development. And that's what you can get with a specialism. So I, I picked University of London because it's a computer science degree fundamentally, but I can specialize in games development. Sounds really good. We already speak. <laughs> I'm a big fan of video games. So thank you for that. Video games are awesome. <laughs> I, yeah. So what specifically attract you to study the bachelor online? If you already mentioned uh, you weren't able to find like this program on your current, on your previous country, but uh, what attracted you to study online? part of that? <laughs> uh, I, I just wanted to do it. I mean, I, I, I don't know how to answer this question because the truth is I just really wanted to be a game developer and I was like, there has to be an option out there somewhere. Uh, so because it was so hard for me to find anything to do anything computer science related, I was like, okay, there has to be an option and this is one. And I just want to say since then, I've gone to the UK and I'm now in California and I'm still doing the degree. So I think that, that that speaks volumes about the choice that I made because I'm now I've now gone across the world and I'm still doing the degree. Definitely. That's one of the key advantages. You are going to be able to move, you know, from one country to the other and you still be able to keep up with your studies. So thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> and now let's talk about the application process. Uh, do you have any tips for those waiting, wanting to apply for the October cohort? Uh, just apply. I think the easiest thing, like for me, I didn't have A levels, so I didn't. I got in through PBA. I didn't even know what PBA was when I applied. I just applied, and then they took me through the PBA route, and they said, "Okay, you got in through PBA." So just apply because it's it's simple. I did it. I did it in the night. Like I said, a spur of the moment, sort of. I want to do this now. I was able to complete it all in the night. So there's, it's not hard. If you don't get accepted, normally you'll most likely get accepted through PBA which is a really good thing because not a lot of universities do PBA. You should know that much. Um, no tips. It's simple. It's very easy to do. So just apply. 
Definitely. That's the best advice <laughs> you can give to students. You know, sometimes you have to take a step and start moving forward. And if you got to stack at some point, remember you can schedule uh, a call, a meeting with a enrollment counselor, and we are going to be there to provide any kind of guidance you may need during the process. All right, good, thank you. And now, um, this is a really good one as well. What kind of projects have you been able to participate in, in and what things have you been able to create so far with the knowledge you have acquired? So. I, I saw this question earlier and I was excited to answer it. I can pretty much, I'm at the end of level five. I can pretty much create anything. Will it be good? No. Will it work? Yes. But I've got the knowledge to pretty much build anything. I'm currently taking a module uh, this semester and the main concept was build a project. And they didn't tell you what project. They just said, you go out there and build a project. And I remember when I first started, I was like, there's no way I'm going to have that kind of knowledge in two years. But in two years, I can build any project. As for what we built, you build a variety until you get to where I'm at. Um, you build two websites, you build a static and dynamic website, you build a you build a game, that's cool. <laughs> you build you build a lot of things in, in a lot of different languages. So you learn enough. And when you get to my stage, you'll be able to make anything. So I think that's the cool thing. That's amazing. You know, because one of the common concerns for uh, students is that this is online. I'm going to be acquiring only theoretical knowledge, but they don't know that they are going to be able to create something. They're going to be able to put in practice their knowledge as well. So that's uh, something really wonderful I mean, to hear. I mean, what, what we're building, just if you guys are curious, is we're building like a social media application, sort of like Instagram, but for UOL students and not photos, but like coding projects. So that's what we're building. And we we have the knowledge to do so. That's amazing, definitely. That's really good. And now, um, let's talk about how have you found the academic and student support so far at the University of London, and how students can connect with professors if they have any questions about the learning materials. So, before I go on to the students, because I want to say that the students are amazing, the academic support is is amazing. But truthfully, you'll probably not use it because of how good the student support is. But every every week you have webinars uh, that are sort of like this, live. You don't have to have your camera on. You can just attend, ask questions live. And if you're not a fan of those, you can post them in forums. So you can just send little sort of short email type things to your, to your professors, to your tutors to get help. But like I said, I don't use it, not because it's bad or anything, but because the student support is really good. You're going to make so many friends and be a part of such a really nice, helpful community. There's so many good, I, I believe there's people working from Google that are doing this degree and all that kind of stuff. So you've got, you've got equally talented and equally knowledgeable students in the degree with you. And you'll probably go to them first and ask them, hey, man, you know, like, like a social way of just like, I'm struggling with this. How did you manage to do this? But um, it's there. It's amazing. I mean, <laughs> you won't have any. You won't have any problems doing it online. Amazing, amazing. Is is it really good to hear that you are not going to be alone? You know, you you will have the support from your colleagues. You're going to be having support from the university itself. Actually, you already answered kind of a little bit of the the <laughs> next question. You know about the student community. But yes, you mentioned that people is really collaborative and you're not going to be feeling alone. But if you want to add a little bit more about how the student community is, that will be great. I mean, it's, it's, it is the community, it really is. Uh, I, wouldn't, I couldn't do this degree without the community. I really couldn't. It's, it's helped me in so many ways. I'm, I get stuck and I ask a student and, and then we would schedule a tour, just me and the student like this and just talk through it as if it was like in real life, like how you would go to someone and be like, hey, let me show you how to do this thing. It's, it's just amazing. And then, like I said, they're all talented. They're all really good. So all the projects you see are like, wow, look at what this person was able to build. And if they can do it, I can do it sort of thing. So it's, it's just, it's top notch. It's the best community I've ever been in. Yes, I have heard that as well. You know, he's really famous about that. So I'm glad to hear that from a current <laughs> student that is there and it's true, you know, it's a really engaging and collaborative community. So thank you Wayne, again for, for sharing. And now let's go for the hard part. What has been your experience with the assessment so far? For example, what kind of evaluations, assignments, coursework do students complete during the program? Uh, well, the good thing about assessments is that it's they've kept it online. I know loads of universities have shifted from doing online assessments to in-person assessments 
because I'm someone that's been moving countries and stuff, I really appreciate the fact that I can just do the assessment at, at home, you know. But um, the assessments themselves, like you said, are two. So it's only two deadlines you have to worry about. It's midterms and finals. And they, again, are two types. So you either submit a project or you do an exam. The midterms are always coursework. So you never have to. It's always like a, an exam paper that you've got two weeks to do. And your final is either the exam or the project. They are challenging. <laughs> Maybe is a good way to put it. I wouldn't say they're hard, but they, they do test you. Um, but it's, I just, again, I want to reiterate the fact that it's really good that they're still online. I think you guys will, you'll appreciate the fact that it's still online. Um, but they're fine. I mean, it's the only two deadlines that you have to do, so they're okay. Awesome. Awesome. I think that will ease the mind of students, you know, regarding about assessment, how hard they're going to be, you know, they, they know they're doable, they're feasible, and you're going to be supportive. So thank you once again for answering the question. And also, this is kind of similar, but uh, what will you consider is the most challenging thing you have faced during your academic journey so far, and how did you overcome it? Um, imposter syndrome and sort of like it getting too hard too quickly if that makes any sense. So imposter syndrome, if you don't know what it is, is basically feeling like uh, you're lying to everyone about what you know. So it's like, oh, I'm in this degree, but actually uh, maybe I don't deserve to be in here because I don't know enough to be in here, or I don't know enough to do this module or whatever. Um, you feel it quite frequently, right? It's a computer science thing. So if you're, if you're coming into the degree, you should know that it's, it's common. I think it's like 80 something percent of all computer science students feel it. Um, it happens, it happens. So it, it ramps up in stages. So every every module you do, you will have enough knowledge to do it. So they, they do structure it well, but you might feel that I don't have enough knowledge to do this one. This module feels way harder than the previous one. Um, the only thing I can say to that is probably 80 something percent of the other students are feeling that way. And the other thing is you are, you will be, you're smart enough to do it. You have all the knowledge to do it. You're intelligent enough. If you're taking this program, you're smart enough to do it. Um, so imposter syndrome was the hardest challenge, but I spoke to people, again, the student community, you can even speak to me if you want. I'm in the community. It is overcomable and you are smart enough to, to beat all these hurdles. Amazing. I think this couldn't get any better because, you know, we are, we're talking about the truth, how, how real it is, you know, we're talking about the good things, but also what kind of challenges you're going to be facing. And it's quite normal, you know, every, every time you start something new, you could be scared, you could be nervous, you could be, you know, facing difficulties. But yes, as you mentioned, with passion, with confidence, you can overcome things. And thank you once again for sharing this. Right. And it's common. So when you feel it, don't feel like um, it's just you. It's it's everyone's feeling the same. Way. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes uh, what you're feeling right now, other one already is feeling that the same. Yeah. You know, we're a community. Yeah. We're just yeah. one person. Perfect, perfect. And uh, one tip about how will you balance your studying and life commitments? Do you have any tips about how we will be able to balance your life and your studies? I mean, I I should be asking you guys, right? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, am I balancing mine? Because I'm, I'm a student that's quite, um, what's the word? I work in like bunches. So like I'll study for like, you know, 12 hours or whatever, and then take a break for another, you know, that's, I work in a bad sort of cycle. But <laughs> I mean, my tip is just find a piece of time in the day to do the work. So if you have, you will know your timetable better than anyone. Um, so if you can just take out maybe an hour or two out of your day, if you can find that, if you can find the time, you know, out of your life normally to do it, you will find enough time to do it. And because it's flexible, if it's too many modules, if you think that the workload is too much, you can drop a module, you can take three. If, it's, if three is too much, you can take two and two is very doable. Um, so it's just about finding your timetable. But what I would say is just find a period of time in the day that you know I'm not gonna be disturbed, even if it's for an hour, an hour on the work is more than enough to get it done. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, and you said something really, really key, that it, the flexibility, you know, this yeah. is what works for you and sounds really great, you know, but everyone will be able to find their own pace, you know, their own yeah. style, but this one is really good to, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, took, I started with four modules and I found it stupid time demanding and I said, okay, well, I, mm. can't, I can't match this. So I just dropped down to three modules. And since then, I've been taking three per semester. 
Right, right. So you, you, can you, guys, you know. Yeah, you, you'll figure it out. You'll figure out what works for you. And it, it's so easy to do so. Perfect. Perfect. And how will you summarize your experience so far in only three words, which are going to be the three words that represent your experience? Uh, fun. I think fun is, has to be there because I've had so much fun building all the projects, meeting all the students, meeting these amazing professors and stuff. Uh, so fun. Flexible has to be one because I'm able to change it, do it whenever. Like I said, it accommodates my schedule of just video gaming for a long period of time and then studying for a long period of time. So flexible and then uh, adaptability kind of is just it gives you so many opportunities outside of this. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be here speaking to students about joining the degree if I didn't like the degree. So I've got the opportunity to speak to you guys and all the students have that kind of opportunity. You know, these opportunities arise. So you, you get this. You get this ability to do a lot of things outside of the degree. Uh, if you study it. So flexible, adaptability, kind of, and fun. Really good. Really good. I totally agree. Totally agree. But thank you. Thank you for that. And last, um, any, any, any last advice to prospective students who are thinking about joining the October cohort? Uh, if you're on the fence, just do it. Simple. I'm pushing you off. Go to the yes side. Just apply. Just do it. There's no, I don't think there's a downside to doing it because I think it's quite, it's quite affordable. It's flexible. You can do it anywhere. You get the degree from an accredited university, blah, blah, all that very good stuff. Uh, so why, why would you say no, right? Just jump over the fence, do it, get it done, give it 100%. So when you're in the degree, really give it your all, really challenge yourself, go the extra mile. You'll benefit from it. I went the extra mile. I'm benefiting from it. Um, and yeah, and just one final, just more technical thing. Uh, when you do join, learn about progression blocker modules. That's it. Uh, a progression blocker module is just a module that you have to complete before you can move on to the next level. So mm -hmm. I think there's like two or one in level four and one in level five. Just learn about it, know which one it is, get it done as soon as possible so that you don't get progressive blockers. But other than that, do the degree. <laughs> Commit to it and you'll be fine. <laughs> Definitely. You heard it, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. No Thank problem. you very much. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, and now let's open up for Q&A um, live session. You know, if you want to say with, with us a little bit, the students are going to be uh, presenting their most common question. If they have any question for Kyle specifically, please add Kyle at the beginning of your question. So we know this is specifically for, for Kyle. Uh, so yes, let's begin. Please, if you have any question, please uh, type on the Q&A chat box your question. Nisha and Anki will be providing answer and we are going to be also providing some answers lively. All right, so let's take a look to what kind of questions do we have right now? All right, all right. So, this one, this one is for you, Kyle. That's Participants great. like <laughs> you're famous <laughs> right now. <laughs> Students would like to, to, to know about uh, a little bit more about your experience with social networking part in the degree, kind of the community. Uh, well, what's the question asking? Like how how I've spoken to people or how I speak to students? Yes. That's the question. Yes. How we were uh, able to communicate with other students? Yep. So there's there's a Slack channel for all university students. So when you when you sign up, it'll be one of the first things that you can click on. You can download Slack, join the channel, and every student is on Slack. Well, not but the majority of students are on Slack. They all click that link and you can use it. If you don't know what Slack is, it's kind of like Discord S thing. And you can just message your friends there. I've made friends where I've taken it off Slack. So I, I message them privately on you know other social media. But Slack is great. So that's that's your main source of speaking to all the other students. Awesome, awesome. That's really good. I, good. I hope that answered your question. Definitely. I think that was really good. Uh, let me double check your other questions. Do we have over here? How do you register your uh, modules through the student portal? I would be more than happy to uh, clarify about this. If you, you want to know in detail about how your registration process works, please uh, scan the QR code and you will be receiving the opportunity to uh, make an appointment with any of the 
enrollment counselors working for this program. So we are going to be able to guide you step by step through the registration process. All right. Good, good. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, this one is for Kyle. He already mentioned it. This is about the specialization he chose. Uh, yeah. Yes, it was, it was games development, you know, right? It was games development. <laughs> and so just one thing on that, if you don't know what specialization to take, you can, you can take the basic computer science one and then decide before you get to level six. So you don't have to pick a specialization out the gate. You can just say, I want to do the, the plain computer science. And then just before level six, if you decide I want to do games development, you can say so. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Samuel Andrew wants to know, I would like to know the steps for the Merida base admission. It's really simple. You will need to complete your application or right? you can schedule an appointment with, with us, with enrolling counselor. So we are going to be able uh, to let you know which documents, but essentially you will need to provide your academic transcripts, your graduation certificates, evidence of your full name uh, and date of birth, motivational letter, all right? English proficiency test, if English is not your first language, all right? And it's just about to apply, right? The admission department is uh, the right department uh, for them to assess your profiles, your evidence, and they will be uh, providing you with that decision between two or three weeks after you complete your application. So that's the way to, to do it. So, but if you want to uh, discuss this in detail, please scan the QR code and then uh, make an appointment with us. All right. Is there any time off between semesters? Essentially, uh, the two semesters go from October to March and April to September. So there's just a couple of weeks for you to go through the registration process. All right. Essentially, there are no big breaks between semesters. We're going to be starting all year round. But you can you can skip a semester if you want to, right? You can just not take a semester for that six months. And you can call that your break. Perfect. But Very like good. I said, but, but it's it's so flexible and fine. You don't even really need the break because you just have this sort of break life in semester. Just because you can just do it whenever. Perfect. That's the truth. That's the truth. Another question. Can I start doing some modules on Coursera before uh, they are actually started? Uh, well, there are some free uh, sample courses provided by the University of London through Coursera. You can take those for free, but those uh, won't be able to transfer credits into the program. But that's a good way to start you know, getting uh, the feel with the platform, how the online learning works. If you don't have many experience learning online, but you want to know how it is. And also there are some free certificate, no, some professional certificate, those are free certificates. Professional certificates you can complete, for example, the Google IT support, the IBM Data Science, the IBM Artificial Engineering, those professional certificates you can take as a standalone programs. And then in the future, if you decide to, uh, move forward with a bachelor degree, you will be able to transfer credits and you could be exempted from one core module for each one of those professional certificates. So that's a good way to start learning something now, all right? And then in the future, if you go for the program, you have already completed some uh, credits that you can transfer and be accepted from the program. But uh, also, if you want to know in detail, please scan the QR code. We are going to be able to hide, to, to guide you accordingly. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, this is for Kyle. Do you have any problem with different local times with other students with any project? Not really. Not really. So the, the T modules or the like the team based ones, uh, the University of Coursera, one of the two, sort of assigns the team for you. And they sort of pick uh, students that are it's a mix and match. They sort of pick um, students that they feel work are working at the same level as you that are in a similar time zone to you so not really but i am working with someone who is in who's currently in south africa which i think is nine hours ahead of my current time but no no problems because you can just schedule it with your team whenever and most of the communication we have is just through like x message we don't really have webinars and calls like this so no no real problems with time zones at all Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, and now nowadays we have many tools to be able to communicate, you know, and to, to interact. So yes, yeah. that, that yeah. helps a lot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, here's another question. Can we use the Google IT support certificate to enroll into the degree? 
under the performance base. Uh, remember, those are professional certificates are standalone. You can complete those, and then you can, uh, when you apply, you, you can request the recognition of prior learning. So essentially, yes, it will match because uh, the subjects you will take on on the performance base are different for the ones you are going to be exempted if you complete the Google IT support. So yeah, you can take it. Uh, let's go for another question. Can I do a job while taking the degree? And will the university provide internships opportunity to us online learners as well? Definitely, yes, you're going to be able to, to work. Actually, you're going to be able to find different background for students, uh, people who are working full time, people with a lot of commitments in life. And yes, essentially, as, as Kyle mentioned, is flexibility. You're going to be able to accommodate the academic workload to your convenience, all right? So yes, it is quite common for you. Uh, regarding internships, uh, no, I'm afraid there are no internships for this program, but there's a uh, really good career services that we are going to be able to go in detail in, a, in an appointment, in a call, if you want to know. But yes, it actually, it's one of the best and biggest career networking uh, services in Europe. You're going to be able to access as well. We already just found this one. Google IT. All right. Uh, this one is for Kyle. Uh, will there Great. be a team projects? And if yes, then how will the teams will be assigned it? I know that there's two team modules into level five. I'm not sure about any team modules in level six. Um, the teams are pre-assigned. So as soon as you start the module, I think in like week four, they tell you who your teammates are. They even give you a specific channel in Slack where it's just you and those team members so you can communicate with your team members there. But it's all pre-defined. They do it all for you, so you don't have to worry. Perfect, perfect. Well, that's really great. That's really great. I think we're coming to an end right now. Uh, Kyle, it was a really pleasure to, it was fun. to be with you today. <laughs> I had <laughs> fun as well. And I hope to be seeing you in future occasions. Uh, no, but yes, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for providing this useful information or real information for a current student uh, to people who is looking uh, to join this program in the future. They're considering to join and it really helps you know, to know such a great experience you have had, right? I mean, yeah, like I said before, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't, I would have said no. I wouldn't want to speak to all these students uh, if it was, if I was having a bad experience. So, it's been great, and I will always be here for for Sarah and to speak to these students just to tell them that it's great that you should do it because I found it great. Um, so, thank you for having me. No, thank you. Thank you once again for joining us today. So, well, everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Before we wrap up, uh, I encourage you to connect via the enrollment counselor. We are happy to help answer your questions. You may have anything you would like to know about the program at the University of London. We're here to help. We will send you a recording uh, of this webinar in a follow-up email, and you can schedule an appointment there or click on the meeting link in the chat below. All right. Thank you once again, everyone, for attending the webinar, and I hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.